What's up, guys? Welcome back to another THP Strength Podcast. In this episode, we are going to be talking about shoes. Uh, obviously, you guys have asked us a ton of questions about which shoes are the best for dunking specifically and for jumping. Maybe we'll talk about training a little bit and weightlifting because that definitely plays a little bit of a role. We'll also talk about barefoot and how that may impact some of the ways that you train or if it's even worth doing at all. And today, our guest is actually one of our athletes, but one of the most I would say intelligent shoe basketball connoisseurs I've ever met. This guy literally has an entire spreadsheet listing off traction, cushion, everything for every shoe he owns. So Shunker, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us how you got into uh, being a sneakerhead. All right. What's up, guys? I'm Shunker. My last name's Iyer. Um, My Instagram handle is at IyerGoHigher, and I started this review series called Above the Rim Reviews. Uh it was a, it was birthed at a dunk camp last year, and I've been talking with uh, Austin, John, a little bit, Isaiah. I've been talking to anyone I can in the dunk community about what kind of shoes they love to jump in, and I kind of just I've always been into sneakers and just for street wear, just to wear them around. And I feel like anyone who's been around basketball kind of has a little bit of that gene in them where they like to look at sneakers. But in the middle of the pandemic, when I started to really tone in on um, getting back into basketball and starting training again. I wanted to, I realized I wasn't doing shit with my sneakers. I had so many shoes. We were all stuck inside during quarantine and I needed to do something with them. So I sold them and I started collecting basketball shoes because I knew that I was going to get use and, you know, usability out of my basketball shoes. And as I started collecting more and more and I started getting more and more athletic, I started collecting more and more. I started figuring out this is really like this 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 is becoming like no one really needs 10 to 15 pairs of basketball shoes if they're not going to do something with it eventually putting it forward if you're not going to get use out of it other other than the sense of just like being a collector so that's kind of how becoming a reviewer uh came into place um and the other thing is like some of us have hyper fixations my hyper fixation is like everything about shoe technology right now and that'll change maybe in 10 years but right now in the prime of my youth that's where i'm at that's incredible. My hyper fixation right now is uh, filming everything about filming and getting better, even though I still suck. Shout out Isaiah for literally telling me I sucked the other day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. <laughs> Isaiah, what is your relationship and Austin, your relationship with basketball shoes currently and the past? I would say Austin is probably more of a sneakerhead than Isaiah or myself, right? Yeah, actually, Austin and I have been on multiple calls at random hours of the day just talking about shoes. <laughs> So true. Yeah. It's funny, like Austin will send me a, a here. Wait, lean towards the mic a little bit closer. Austin will send a, a picture of like a, just some new basketball shoe that's dropping like every every other week saying he wants to get it. <laughs> and then I'm just like, don't you have like 50 pairs already? And then I'm I feel like I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's like once I find a shoe that I like, I use that shoe for no joke years. Like I, I think I had like I had a, a pair, they were under armor. I remember it had micro G, it said micro G in the in the heel or something like that. I think that was the technology for the phone. I used that for like two years. Um and then I went like hyper dunks. That was another shoe I used for years. Then it went like Jordan 28. Again, every time I go to like a new shoe, it's a couple of years. And then I think the shoe I've used the most was my Kobe 10s, which I got in 2016, and I still use it. Like, is that the one with like the green bottom or something? Yeah, like that? I'll still bring it out every now and then. Which and, and the zoom units are literally popped in that shoe. <laughs> yeah. So what, I'm just like, I don't know. I think I, I grow attached to to shoes. And it also comes from like, oh, I keep forgetting to get closer to the mic. It, I think a lot of it comes from like just being a kid. Like we didn't have a lot of money. So I, I used to use the same pair of shoes to go to school, play basketball in like if we would go to like dinner, like anything like that, it was literally just one pair of shoe that I own. And it was always a basketball shoe. I kind of, I, I kind of relate to that a little bit as well, but Austin, tell us how you uh, form such a special and intimate relationship with basketball shoes. Um, I think it was when I started jumping, like I was in middle school and uh, I would try different people's shoes out because my mom didn't want to buy me any of the, like the new Nikes or anything. And I had this friend Ron and uh, he had a pair of Kobe sixes when they first came out. And I remember I tried them in gym class for battle ball, which is basically just dodgeball. And I went and I jumped and I smacked the backboard. I felt like a goth. Like I felt like <laughs> and from that point on, I was like, these shoes, like there's something about the shoes you wear. Like, and I, I used to try to like be, I would be obsessed about finding the right shoe 
to just amplify my athletic performance. I got to the point where I was so obsessed in like ninth grade, I started something called a kick jar. And at my old school, we would, our classes were so long, we were able to leave to get cookies from the cafeteria, a snack, like a snack break, it'd be 25 cents. So I'd ask everyone for, you know, 25 cents to go get a cookie or something. And I would save it and I would put it in a kick jar to buy a pair of shoes. Like at the end of the year, I got like D roses like that. I did all this stuff because I wanted to test all these things. And my mom, you know, didn't want to get them for me, but Lately, what, I, what I love about the story is that Austin is our, our top sales guy. And it's obvious that he's always been, um, you know, very good at, uh, at marketing and, um, you know, I, and, and, and just making sales. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a way I've kind of been in the same boat where like, I just wanted so many pairs of shoes, but until, until I could really afford my own, I wasn't actually, I couldn't get them. I kind of had to like beg at the mercy of my parents. And yeah. the other thing about uh, Isaiah's relationship with shoes is because Isaiah, as a dunker, you've documented every single step of your of your path to being a pro dunker. I can actually identify the eras of your dunk, like of your dunk career, by the shoes. That that's <laughs> funny. It's funny you say that because Austin is is the exact same way, and mm -hmm. it, and it's crazy because like I never uh, fixated on the shoes that people were wearing. Like it never, it, it was never something that like s stuck out to me, but certain people like Austin, he'll be like, I'll, I'll say a certain like time period and he'll be like, Oh, that's when you used to wear like the so-and-so <laughs> so-and-so shoe. And I'll be like, yo, that's like, that's crazy. You like, you remember that, but yeah, that's pretty cool. I think now it's just like, I, I have this weird thing where I have this really unhealthy relationship with dunking. And if I have one bad session, I don't ever want to wear the shoe again. So <laughs> I used to just wear like the shoe all the way through. Like me and Isaiah are always wearing the same shoes by like chance. Like we wore the Kobe tens at the same time. Freak twos, Kobe sixes, GT cuts, Jordan 36s, way away tens. It's always the same shoe. But the moment I have one bad session, I think there's some bad voodoo. And I'm like, all right, time to, <laughs> to enhance my performance. Like, I don't think it has anything to do with training or mindset or fatigue. I just shoot all the shoes. It's my shoes. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you ate for lunch or if you had like something a little bit too much fatty oils in it. No, it's the shoes. Definitely. Just, the to the right, so <laughs> oh, I try to sell them or something. I'm done. No, it's just like, I'm done with these. All right. So this is the, the first, very first topic that I want to cover, which is, do you guys feel like basketball shoes can help you jump higher? Like, I would say that's the number one thing that I, I, I wouldn't say the number one thing, but about shoes in general it's like, is it a good shoe or a bad shoe? But specifically, will this shoe help me jump higher or will I jump higher if I wear this insole or this shoe? So I want to hear, we'll start with Isaiah, then Austin, then actually let's start with Shunker first. Shunker, okay. do you feel like shoes will increase your vertical alone? Nothing else, nothing in the training, just your shoes alone. That's, yeah, there, there are a lot of nuances that go into specifically technology, what kind of surface you're jumping on. But when it comes to dunkers who are going to be ideally dunking on hardwood, they can't do they can't dunk on hard hardwood barefoot unless you're Dak because Dak's a freak, right? But when it comes to maximizing your athletic output, there is going to be a right shoe and a wrong shoe for everyone. And the goal is to find the most right shoe for you. So the most right shoe will maximize your athletic potential or get as close to that 95% in a given session every single time. And to that point, you might think it's it's about perception. It's not as much as oh, this shoe made me jump higher. It's more, this shoe made me closer to my maximum potential. And that's how I like to view it. But if you think that your maximum potential is actually 70% of how you're feeling on any given day, then technically, yes, shoes will make you jump higher. Right. So you're saying it's almost like the placebo or the way that you feel in the shoe and the confidence that you have because you know that you're, you've jumped your highest in that shoe you're like, well, there's, I can't, I'm not going to leave anything to chance. This is obviously my best shoe. I've had my outlier day in this shoe. So it must be this shoe. Um, and for whatever reason that outlier day happened, maybe it's grip, maybe it's cushion, maybe it's comfort, whatever it is. That's actually the driver of whether or not you're, uh, you're actually going to jump your highest, not per se the technology inside of it. So, although you, like you said, it can't augment it maybe, but Isaiah, Austin, what do you guys think? Do you guys think the shoe, does the shoe matter? Do you jump higher because of the shoe? So I'll, I'll go first on this one. Um, my short answer, and then I'll go into more detail is it matters to a, such a small extent that I feel like people put too much energy into, into it. Um, 
I think there is a ideal, like obviously you can optimize literally everything to, to jump higher. We just don't know how much it actually affects your vertical. For example, if all, all things the same, uh, you'll probably jump higher on eight hours of sleep than like six or five or six hours of sleep. How much higher? We, we don't know. Um, diet, same thing. You could eat something and that might have changed your vertical, but you have no idea how much. And certain things, I think, move the needle more. So what's going to move the needle more? Having done six months of prep in terms of your training and then you like deload. And that's probably going to set you up to jump really high regardless of how much sleep or what you eat. Like I've had amazing sessions off two hours of sleep when I'm overseas uh, and having eight McDonald's for breakfast because that was the only thing that was available. Um, now, having said all that, as far as like shoes specifically, um, I used to care a lot more about about like what shoes I was wearing. But then I had a few experiences. The first experience was I hit my first windmill ever wearing Hirachi free runs. If you don't know what a Hirachi free run is, look, look that up. It's, it's great, like, great shoe. Running shoe, right? Not yeah. only are Hirachis already terrible for jumping higher, free runs are even more terrible for 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 jumping. Um, and I did that like on my street in concrete, and like it was one of my best jumping days ever. Oh, um, now if I had had a little bit better shoe, I probably would have probably like jumped a little bit better. But having that experience, I was like, whoa, like this might not matter as much as I thought it uh it does. The second experience I had, because from, from then on, like, I basically just look for grip because I have such an aggressive penultimate that I've had issues like slipping in sessions, um, depend depending on the surface. So I started looking for shoes that strictly just gave me like good grip. And then I did, just did not spend any energy looking at any other factors of the shoe. Um, but then I went to Dunking and around this time, Kmart uh, had a basketball shoe. Um, I think it was Rise mm -hmm. is what like the brand was called. Um, and they hired Guy Dupuy, Jonathan Clark, Porter Mayberry, and Chris Staples to basically do a dunk contest every single day for an entire summer. And they just literally like went to different cities and they dunked every day, like against each other. Wait, what was uh, that? What was that for? That was for the shoe? For shoe. That was for the shoe. Yeah, it was like marketing for the shoe. Um, I went and I think I went to Dunk King. They gave us a pair because they were they were all in, in Rise gear and they gave everybody there like Rise uh, basketball shoes. And the shoes freaking suck. Like they felt like they were made out of, out of cardboard, like no grip, like no nothing on them. And I'll pay less, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they were still able to jump like really great. Like that was prime Guy de Puy. Prime Guy de Puy mopped the floor with me in Kmart shoes. And he had like he had no issues. And then uh then I tried them, they were like pretty, pretty bad. But then I was like, oh, like, and something being around Guy that he would always tell me, because he he like mentored me around that like early time, is he would he always drilled into my head, the shoe doesn't matter, man. You can go out here and slide and like do blah blah blah. You can go out here and barefoot, like you should still be able to do your dunks. And it just like I don't know. I literally I was just trying to soak everything in that he told me. And so you're saying Guy brainwashed you? He did. He did brainwash me in a good way, I think. Um, but from that moment, I was just like, it's not the shoe. It's not the shoe. Like the shoe doesn't matter. You can put me in anything and I'll, and I'll uh, dunk in it. And then the last experience that I had was Staples. We were dunking at Venice Beach. Uh, the floors were shit. Like it was like really windy. I think like lots of leaves on the floor, like dusty. Everybody was slipping. And then Chris Staples was doing reverse 360 under both in his Kmart shoes while everybody else was slipping and then i was just like okay there's there's something about the dunker like like if if you suck you're gonna suck if you're good you're gonna you're gonna be good um and i think those like little one percent two percent differences in performance don't matter as much as you get better and better so i just focus my energy on getting better and better instead of trying to like squeeze out like the one percent here like one percent there um having said all that i still want that half a percent of increase because that could be the difference between 50.5 and 51. Um, but literally the only thing I care about is grip. Aside from that, like I don't really, really care about and and that it doesn't hurt my feet. Like, and I'm pretty good with that. So yeah, sorry for the long rant. I I liked it. Isaiah, also I don't know. Tap your mic real quick. Let me see if it's actually coming through there. It's not coming through there at all, by the way. You're definitely on your laptop audio. The so you guys have just been leaning towards the mic in a cutesy way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
oh, I'll yeah, think you can uh, you can figure it out and then try mic check. It also might be worth just taking it off. Anyways, uh, yeah. So that was really insightful. I to to sum that up, basically, you're more or less in the. Uh, oh wait, tap it. Let me hear. Here, actually, blown up. Hello, hello, hello. You know, it's a hundred percent in that mic. You, you think so? hundred percent. Yeah. All right. It didn't sound like it to me. Anyways, um, so to sum that up, uh, Isaiah, you basically don't feel like the shoe matters. It's it's the dunker, and you can dunk in anything, and it might make a little bit of a difference, but it's not gonna be, you know, make or break on on if you're gonna jump. My my, my final uh, <laughs> my final opinion is only grip matters in terms and of jump height. In terms of getting jump height. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Austin, what um, is your take on it? Do you feel like the shoe matters? It helps you jump higher outside of just psychologically, maybe. I think obviously, like if you're jumping in Tim's, that's going to take a huge effect on your, you know, on your vert, but he T flying high does it. Yeah, but he's, he's a different breed, man. Like he don't like, <laughs> he just, I don't know. I think there's something about picking the right shoe that ensures like a certain amount of confidence. Like if I feel like I'm going to fly that day, or I feel like I'm flying because I'm getting off the ground quicker or like the shoe just like has a better, I don't know, just, this is rolls. I don't know. Like, yeah, it just, that's a good point. Like, it, like a placebo. yeah, exactly. Like I remember I used to wear LaMelo ball shoes and they were so clunky. I felt like I couldn't jump off two foot. I couldn't do this and that. And then I watched the videos and I was like flying because they felt clunky. I didn't have the confidence and I was like, Oh, but it's more about picking the shoe that makes you feel the most confident. Like you can fly in it. And I think it doesn't necessarily matter but it's just about kind of just reinforcing your mind and just giving yourself. I have, I have a point related, related to that. The leaning, leaning tens. Yeah. Wait, wait, first tens. time, first time I tried them, I hated them, I guess. Cause the break in period, yeah. but I just hated them. I didn't like how they felt on my feet. It was uncomfortable. It like dug into my feet. Then I moved, had no shoes except the leanings that I could use. It was literally the only shoe in my house it forced me to use them. And then I started having some good sessions. And then I was like, I actually like the shoe. And now that's my, literally my main dunking shoe. So yeah, the mindset thing's huge. Yeah, I definitely same, think oh, yeah, literally oh. the same thing happened to me. Like the first time I tried the way of weight tens was like the first up and down. I'm just like, wow, I spent 240 on this pair. Like, and I can't return them, but three more wears and they were, they were my favorite. So Austin, your, your take, sum it up. How, what is your, if you had a, I, I think, I think you have to pick the shoe that makes you feel the most confident. Like if it feels light, what feels good to you. Something for me personally is like, I do like grip. I want to feel like there's nothing on my foot. Like, I don't want to be thinking about my shoe. If I'm feeling the clunk, if I'm doing a two foot jump and the, the, what, what is the thing called? It's like the transition. Like the, if it's clunky, I, I don't heel, like heel to I toe like to, transition. Heel, Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Um, you, you want it you want it to feel like it's a boat rock. Yeah, I want it, I want it to be natural. And I think that makes me feel faster. That makes me feel like I'm jumping higher. And in turn, that allows me to jump higher and run faster just because I feel more confident. Um or a banana. Or a banana. Yes. <laughs> okay. So yeah, like that's I think it just comes down to just reinforcing what is going to give you the right mindset. So like for me, it's totally irrational for me never to wear a shoe again because I have one bad session, even though I didn't sleep for three days and have like I've only eaten like tacos. <laughs> yeah. I got I got one one thought on on this. And I think I think where I lie is actually like really closer to Austin's side more than to Isaiah's side. But I think anyone can jump in anything. <laughs> anyone can jump in anything if you have the adrenaline pumping, you know? Um, and if you have the expertise, you're gonna feel like you're flying. But I think where the shoe matters the most is when you're on your 120th jump. Um and your legs are dead and you just want to get that last max effort jumps in and and you just want to be able to just commit to it send it but your body is crying out and the shoe that's the shoe that's going to feel like it's not hindering you at that moment is going to be the shoe that you like the most yeah i so i i just realized i like a shoe best if after having done a, a long session i didn't think about the shoes at all that's when I know the shoe was good. There's, there's, all right. There's two little points. I've heard you quick. say that before. You've told me that. I'll make these points very quick. Um, another thing is like visualization. Whatever I can think of myself dunking into the session, if there's anything hindering me, it's like, oh, I see a new shoe. It's like I'm kind of afraid to jump in it or this and that. Then I'm obviously going to go into to the session with the mindset like, oh, the shoe isn't good for me. One thing that helps is the visualization. So if I think about my session, I think about a shoe, I wear that shoe. If I see someone dunking in a shoe continuously on Instagram, like Isaiah, for example, with his 2012 hyper dunks that are gray and blue from 
the those things are fire. Yeah. You know? So for example, <laughs> like that, that made me see and be able to visualize myself in that shoe because I'm watching dunkers do it. That's why I think like companies sending out these sneakers for free and allowing people to dunk and dunk and seeing all these videos, it, it makes you imagine yourself dunking in that shoe. It makes it 100%. easier to dunk in that shoe. Um, what's, what's been really interesting is like the gorilla marketing tactics of way of Wade to basically, Oh, look at that beauty. Uh, I missed, I missed the boat on those. <laughs> yeah. but Wait, what year are those Isaiah? 2012. Those I remember that's, like all of Isaiah's shoes. Like, that's the weird. one I wore those as well. Um, mine were white and black. That's 2012. You said, yeah, it was, it, but for me, it wasn't about the shoe. It was the color. It made me the feel color. I literally put those shoes sexy. on and I was like, yo, I'm about to jump so high in these. That's this fuck boy. Oh, the other small <laughs> point, the other small point is my first dunk was outside in cargo pants in Converse, low top Converse. I just oh, felt man. bouncy. And that's kind of like Isaiah's like Harachi thing. It was just like I was I was after school. I was at my friend Keith's house and I was outside dunking. I felt bouncy and I felt I didn't have anything hindering me. And it was literally in Converse. So wait, my first dunk was outside in Nike free run twos also. So oh, wow. <laughs> what maybe that's yeah. the key. The key yeah. is a Nike free run shoe. You heard here. Nike first. free run. <laughs> that's what that's what Chris Spell knows that we all don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, so no, Wade's marketing is smart though, because like I can only like a lot of times I see myself jumping in certain shoes like now. Like I want to try those All City Elevens so bad because I see like Dom doing the craziest stuff in them, and I just want to want to try them out. It's amazing are, that you guys. These are my like, my Hirachis, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, throw it back. <laughs> Perfect technique. Wow, elite. All right. So that being said, let's. Uh, actually, I didn't even give my my take on this. I am. Probably, I I very much agree with you guys. Although I will say, the older I get, the more that I notice uh, a marginal difference between shoes. So, for example, as a one foot jumper, I feel like different shoes definitely make a big difference. For two foot, I don't notice any different. You could literally put me in anything, and I don't notice any different. But yeah. difference. But for your reverse, Austin. Yeah, like two foot, yeah, it's like, right. I, I, it feels clunky. One foot, I can just run and kind of jump. I don't really need grip. I don't really need much unless I'm doing spins or something. So, so yeah, I grip, I will say this. Thing. Grip does not matter for one foot at all. For two foot, for two foot, I, I just run slower. I don't jump high enough off two. Maybe that it matters for me. Maybe that's the point. But for one foot, grip doesn't matter as much for me, but it's more the way that the shoe will compress. So for example, the Jordan 36, probably my favorite shoe right now. I like that shoe because I can feel the zoom unit compress when I actually go to jump off one foot. And when I jump really high, it compresses more. It feels almost like a, like it's loading. I feel the pressure yeah. up in the shoe and I just pop off the ground. So that's why it's one of my favorite shoes. Does the, is the grip good? No, the grip sucks. A lot of people hate that shoe because of the grip. Does the, uh, I'm trying to think of like other qualms. A lot of people have a lot of issues with like that. It's shoe. got like bad stability. Like, yeah, okay, it's not down. good for lateral support whatsoever. Again, I'm a one foot jumper. I don't really care. <laughs> like, and on that, top that of that, you it's said, you said the shoe was the reason I messed up my ankle. Okay. I, I believe that it is. I think that <laughs> hey, no one's you have, by Nike this is, here. This you is like another, uh, this is like another point. If you have, and this is just biomechanics. If you have a big heel on a shoe or like a large, Actually, I have my 36s right here. I'll just grab them. Hold, where, please. Where did John go? Oh, he I'm back. Oh. All right. So, <laughs> so this is the this is the 36, right? And so you can see that space right there from where your arch would be to the ground. So that's going to make you a, a considerably taller, actually. And then two, the distance from where your arch or your foot is actually touching the shoe to the ground is greater. There's a greater distance for that. And what that does is it creates a lever. So if you were to catch the edge of this shoe, right? If you were to hit the edge of the shoe like this, uh, what's going to happen is you create more torque at the ankle because of that. So if you ever heard Steven used to talk about this all the time, he's like, dude, I love my Kobe's like Kobe's are the best. And he always used to dunk in something that was like a high top and whatever else. And he's like, but I love the Kobe's now. Like it's my favorite shoe. And the reason why is because I don't sprain my ankles anymore. I used to sprain my ankles all the time in high tops. It's not the high top. It's not, not the low tops. top. That doesn't do shit for your ankle. Yeah. It's the fact that the shoe has a massive distance. I, I don't know even know what the, the term is for the distance from where your foot actually touches down to the ground. Uh, heel stack. He, it's, 
we it's it's informal but we refer to it as heel second this is a really good topic if we want to segue i got some thoughts about this yeah yeah i think we i think we could um but yeah i would say you know for me personally in, in terms of everything it, i notice the biggest biggest difference if i can feel that compression in the shoe and then the second thing is that i think makes a difference for me is as a one foot jumper the type of takeoff that you do, the shorter the, the takeoff, the more elastic the shoe benefits you. And I think this kind of even goes further into track. The longer the ground contact time, I think the more cushion that the shoe has generally, uh, it doesn't matter as much if the shoe is soft, I guess is maybe the best way to say it. Whereas if you're very, very quick on and off the ground, like a high jumper or a long jumper, you do not want anything that mushes at all. Uh, and And that's, I have like different reasons for believing that, but that's my, my personal kind of take on it for two foot. I'm not as knowledgeable with it. Like I said, I, I kind of suck at two foot. I just like comfort. <laughs> and I, if I'm slipping a lot, like really twisting a lot, I don't love that, but sometimes too much grip is actually bad for me off two feet. But again, my, I'm not, I'm a really non unconventional two foot jumper. Like I don't have super mobile hips or anything like that. So it's definitely different for me, but yeah, let's talk about some of the, the tech we'll kind of pivot into a different topic here. So out of like the different areas that make up a shoe and Shunker, I know that you said we could kind of move into this topic. What are some of the, like the big picture things that you want to look at when you're looking at a shoe? So one of the things you talked about was what was it called? Heels or stack? Heel stack. Yeah. Heel stack. What about four foot stack? Is that a thing? Yes. Yeah, so, um, for those of you guys who have been following my review series, you guys know my five categories, uh, this goes into court feel. So court feel is, Really, when I think about yeah, court define feel, like, define core feel. What is it? I think about the distance between your the balls of your foot, the forefoot, and then the ground right here, and it's how close you can can do that, and really how much power can you spread across your toes and your and the palm of your foot, and put that into the ground on your plant. Um, so when guys talk I, about court feel, it's like literally, can you feel the ground, and it's directly yeah. directly linked to the distance from your foot to the ground. What did you call it again? Four foot stack and heel stack? Yeah. So um, heels, whatever, heel we'll call it is, stack. Yeah. So heel stack is kind of like more for, for cushion. And if it's really high and you don't have great heel lockdown, then you're extremely, uh, you're extremely susceptible to ankle sprains and ankle fractures. And Puma has like Puma's NBA pro athletes have had a serious problem with this because Puma, I cannot stand how much tech and how much useless tech they put into their shoes they just put a big slab of useless eva and they put their athletes up an inch Wait, off what's, the ground. what's eva <laughs> eva is just like a regular uh, this is like the basic standard uh running cushioning foam for the last 50 years it's uh it's the water of cushioning technology if that makes sense it's kind of like when you uh, say water what? What, do you, wait, what do you mean is it just like the it's standard it's it's basic so this is just a LeBron like lunar 11 lawn? insole. Yeah, Lunar Lawn. Lunar Lawn is EVA. Nike React is EVA. So it's basically um, just like foam, composite. Yeah, composite like soft foam. foam. Yeah, and there's different and there's different kinds of like rigidity, uh, flexibility, cushioning ratios that you can play with EVA. But for the most part, it's bare bare bottom. If someone's using EVA and it's just EVA in a cushioning system, it's pretty poor. Um, I think I got a little bit off topic, so <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, yeah, like, you, you were talking about basically the different terminology. So we talked about the stack. Yeah. We talked a little bit about some of the different foams, but let's say there are like four, like you said, there are like four or five things you talk about. We talked about core feel and stack. What are some of the other things that you, you talk about in Isaiah and Austin? I want to hear what your four or five things, you know, if you had to categorize, what five categories would you look at? Yeah. So going back to EVA, uh, Mount, like, bounce technology when it comes to material itself and then um the overall rigidity of the shoe which matters somewhat and can be mitigated by the lack of in other reasons but when i talk about like technology i'm saying like so this is the hardened three this is like i'm talking about boost technology which is um something called etpu uh expanded thermal polyurethane um, so is this the is this like standard does Nike have their own ETPU or is this trademarked by the shoe company? Great question. Nike does not been messing with ETPU at all. So that um, is like the polymer. It's like the actual name of the polymer. Like we see this material on other things outside of just boost. Yes. And actually leaning developed leaning and a bunch of Asian brands develops their own. So this is the JB one that I'm pulling out. This insole right here is boom, which is not ETPU, but it's ETPE, 
uh, for elastomer or something like that. But essentially, it's these little beads that have been heated up, steamed, and uh, and then when they they're steamed, they form to a mold, kind of like a foam, and then they have a ton more energy return, acting like a foam. Okay, so that's what makes up boost and what you called uh, what is it called in the leaning? Boom, boom, and that's et basically etpu, and it's yeah. just the idea of the polymers, I assume, or like make these little balls that are fused together. Yeah, and then the la and then Nike has uh. For 25 years, they've had this thing called Zoom, which Zoom in is the bottom of uh, this white thing here at the bottom. Here, hold it closer to the camera. Hold it in front of your face. There we go. There Zoom, we go. This white thing at, at the bottom of my LeBron 11 insoles. Um, it's really like highly stretched fabric in between an air sole unit, and it provides just about as much energy return. Um, well, it's provided more energy return than literally everything on the market for about 20 years until uh, Adidas and Leaning came out with their version, their their counter to it. Which was? Um, boost and Boom. Boost and yeah. Boom. Okay, so yeah. those are the polymers, basically. Yes. Okay, yes. so when we talk about... Do they have do, do the do they have more energy return than the Zoom air, uh, Zoom units? This is this has kind of been tested, um, and I'm going to show... I'm how gonna do they test it? Yeah, this. share your screen. Show us how they yeah. test it. Yeah, okay. So you see... Come on. All right, so you see this guy right here. Um, so this is this is a table provided from a Reddit user Efficient Zone for the B Ball Shoes subreddit, and it's showing the um, percentage of energy return when a steel ball is dropped onto the forefoot in the heel of these shoes, and what technology uh, is corresponding to these. So these ratings are like not a perfect rating, but it's a good enough rating um, to show like quantity of energy return for different technologies so as you can see here uh you got boom for the most part when it comes to average what the hell is big three meal. pro uh it's a it's a 361 is the uh shoe that aaron gordon is signed to in china and big three pro is like kind of just like their basic model but how do we um, get that that's the winner isn't it yeah, I haven't really gotten around to testing this one because I don't like to use this table as gospel, but it's a pretty good indicator of um it's a pretty good in indicator of how much energy return you're getting in a shoe. So yeah, that's valuable. I, All right. So you talked about core field, you talked about energy return, or I don't know what you want to call that. Is there anything else that you grip, obviously, is something you look oh, at? Yes. Last thing. Um let me turn let me stop sharing and show so this is the wave weight 10 and you can see this black thing right here this is a carbon fiber shank that goes all the way down all the way throughout the shoe and that is like one of the last things that i really like to see in a shoe is can the rigidity of the shoe maximize energy return uh and the carbon fiber does a really good job when it's bottom loaded of snapping back up the energy you put into it on your heel to toe strike and especially on a two foot plant I, is when i feel it the most um, in your Jordan 36s, you kind of feel it in the same way how uh, the outsole is connected at the bottom, but then there's that little air pocket and that little arch in the middle uh, of the shoe. There's an air pocket in the arch? I didn't know. Sorry, that. no air pocket. It's like there's an absence. Oh, of yeah, energy. you're talking about the the hard yeah. plastic. Yeah, the hard plastic. Yeah, yeah. So like that's, kind of, kind, of that's kind of how you feel it. Right. Yeah, that that I definitely agree with. Okay, yeah. so you said grip. You like the the whether it has like that shank basically yeah. in it. Yeah, and to create a lever, which I've you've seen, we've seen things about mm -hmm. the cushioning and how much return you get out of that, and then basically what was the last one? The stack of the shoe, I guess, is kind of a core feel. Yeah. All right, and so then, Isaiah and Austin, what yeah. do you guys? If you had to like sum it up, do you agree with those like four or so? Oh, and or the weight and the weight of the shoe and overall. weight. And then, is yeah. there anything else you guys would add? I mean, oh, you got it. Oh, you can you can do a go first. Um, I definitely agree. Um, I like I do like uh, response like a lot of responsiveness. I'm not big on lots of cushion. I feel like I jump better where I think it's just because of the track background. I'm used to the track spikes. I'm used to like the really like stiff, uh, like midsole. Um, but I do like zoom a lot. I do like boom, but I do like, I, I think it's because of my weird feet. Like I have like the strongest feet ever for no reason. And I feel like if I have too much cushioning and too much like soft, like I don't know. What's a, what's a good example? Like a really soft, high, like cushioned shoe. Uh, the um, I've been using them. PG Paul George, yeah, the Paul George. Yeah, I don't feel like I I'd feel oh, comfortable PG4s, jumping yeah. in that because I like I don't know like I have the weirdest feet ever. Like I can dunk barefoot. Like I can hang from a upside down from a pull up bar by my toes. Like I actually brought a picture for reference for that. <laughs> if we're talking about barefoot, it's what? it's 
interesting like thinking so looking at that list um i i didn't think i paid attention to like responsiveness of the shoe or like the energy return mm -hmm. but looking at the, at that list a lot of the shoes that i like are like high up on that on that list and i always describe them as like um like kobe's like that's like my ferraris because they give me that like that court feel they have that like that full length zoom in them yeah um so i think i like subconsciously liked that feeling in shoes um but i will say when jumping outdoors i love cushiony shoes because like yeah. jumping outdoors it tears my feet up like and especially in florida it's really freaking hot and your foot will like slide in the shoe and stuff and like if i'm not in something like cushiony or something that's like too tight like it, my feet are literally in pain after after sessions so that's why if you see like I've been doing rehab sessions outdoors for the last month and it's all been in my PG fours just because I like how they feel outside. Because they have so much cushion in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I separate bounce and cushion because bounce is for the first few jumps where you're feeling your best. And then cushion is for the last few when your legs are screaming at you. Yeah. And how how much is that how much is that pain going to be mitigated by the, the cushion? So yeah. Isaiah, you basically if it hurts your foot or not, you said what you're describing that as cushion. Uh <laughs> the joints it's the whole I have, two, I have two it's like chunker set like if i i like how cushiony shoes feel because they're more comfortable but i feel like i jump higher and just responsive low to the ground like free like like i just think kobe's like when, yeah. when i think that like do you, do you do guys agree to... austin chunker you guys agree with that I have a theory with Kobe's and it's the idea that when you have a, a shoe with a lot of court feel, there's less distance for power to be dissipated between your foot and the ground and before it comes back up into you, which is why I'd even argue like if you're just barefoot on like a track and field, you're going to feel really, really, really bouncy, even though you're not wearing any shoes. Right. So that's where I get the idea that, you know, Kobe's they're super lightweight. Uh, usually have really good traction and you can feel really, really powerful and strong and jump high in them. And it's really because um, sometimes the technology is there, but most of the time it's not going to compare to something like the way of weight tens where the technology isn't all there, but you're able to put more power and get power back into it because you're basically right above the ground. I, I also think that lack of cushion can be mitigated by having a shoe that really fits well to your foot uh, cause that's a factor a lot of people don't consider is like a shoe could be rated amazingly, right? Like Shunker could go out and review a shoe and it could have amazing responsiveness, amazing cushion, amazing grip, like just fives across the board. Like let's say a theoretical five across the board shoe, but if your foot's fucking weird and you put, and you put it on and it doesn't fit you, like it's going to feel like shit. So yeah. that, that's something that like when I first when I, what I look for in a shoe, um, and you got to think of like a break in period because like the leanings didn't follow this, but for 90% of the shoes that I've worn, it's followed this. Like, I know a shoe is going to be my shoe when I put it on. Like, as soon as I put it on, I'm like, oh, baby, like this, this fits nice. Yeah. So that's another like factor to consider. There's, um, I don't know. There was always this thing with the, with the cushioning. There's these shoes, uh, serious player only. I, I've texted you. Oh, I just, I got, yeah, I got my yeah. hair in. So, yeah. <laughs> so they're super lightweight and low to the ground. And I had one session in them before I hurt my knee again, before I got put on training probation. And now I have to train with Isaiah every day. Um, <laughs> what did you call I, it? I training, 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 training probation. probation. I'm not allowed to train alone anymore. He, like, literally, I literally, he, he comes to my house and I don't let him train unless I can like watch him train. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, get, I have to get my rights back, but, um, yeah, I had a session in them and I was feeling like crap, but I was flying. I, I hit a behind the back on nine, eight, I hadn't jumped. And then I under, I back rimmed and under both. And like, I had like an in-game dunk and a bunch of stuff and I haven't been really training. My knees have been messed up. And like, I honestly love those things. And I think it's because the cushion could cushion, <laughs> the cushion is minimalistic and it is low to the ground. And I do like that feeling. They're also great shoes. I, I don't know how durable they are yet. But. Can I bring, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I want to bring up a point and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. You're not allowed. No, I'm kidding. Go. Um, <laughs> so we all know who Jordan Kilgannon is. And oh yeah. I was going to bring him up. Yeah. No, who's he? Uh, it's apparently, it's this guy who apparently is pretty good at dunking. Is that blue hair guy? Yeah. The guy with blue yeah, hair? Yeah, you got blue hair. Sometimes oh, it's green, John. Sometimes it's green. About. Yes, yeah. blue hair guy. Got it. So, as we all know, he he jumps in LeBron tens. That was like yeah. like his main his main shoe. 
and they make you tall as hell. Like they add like a, a ton of height. How is that actually? Does that actually play a big role? Like if you could get a shoe that would add three inches to your height, would that be beneficial? Is it is it the same thing as dunking? Right. If a shoe makes you two inches taller compared to other shoes, is that the same thing as dunking on nine ten? Uh, no. yeah. What are your guys' thoughts? Because I've actually I've personally never tried jumping in something that makes me significantly taller. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. And something interesting. Well, you jumped in thirty six. Yeah, so something interesting is a lot of the shoes I like actually make me quite a bit taller. Like the Kobe's, you would think uh, that they're like they don't make you tall at all. But I, I remember I measured my standing reach a few years ago, and I think it was the Kobe ads. I think is what they what they were. The you remember ADX those? Is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I used to love those shoes at the time, and they made me way taller. Like it was like I think like a half inch difference compared to my other other shoes that i was wearing at the time so, so the yeah. bb net nxts the those tall ones down there. oh yeah with the with the huge react and the they're heel, like they're like the bronze yeah, yeah. So i was um, tall i was like a solid six foot like which is not you know not a thing like i wore them actually to every single first date for like a year i was gonna you know? say um, that. <laughs> but but um yeah i didn't really notice a difference in jumping at all like it, it didn't i feel like it, it was weird like the height didn't really play a factor yeah. with it at all for me like i jump higher in a shoe that's all right get, i don't know it's it's weird you would think though i I've never i actually i actually have some a lens on this but shunker i want to hear what you have to say yeah um so as you guys know i went around and asked as many of the high jumpers at dunk camp last year as i could about what shoes they wear and out of all of them jordan kilgan was the outlier everyone almost everyone said some form of kobe's or zoom freak threes basically something that's lightweight with a really good traction and jordan kilgannon's like nah i love lebron tents and i love it and i don't care about how heavy it is and i don't care about how old it is they got really good traction they have crazy 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 bounce which is because of the way it works is they put zoom inside like a really thick air unit that goes around under the entire foot and a shank so it kind of makes sense that like when he plants he's getting crazy spring back so it's actually mitigating the weight the, the, the vertical loss from the weight of the shoe and the vertical loss from the power dissipation because the composition of the shoe has really good uh has really good power return but i mean it's hard it's hard to say that it's exactly like i think if you can get closer to the ground you would and jordan is just he's gonna do what works for him and i i think of his his approach is like it's going to be viable but it's also a little bit of an outlier compared to everyone else that's been in the dunking community and what they like to dunk in but what are your thoughts john yeah so i actually feel like the the more height that i get from a shoe is usually related to the potential to deform more because the stiffness is typically lower and i will typically jump higher in a shoe that allows me to do this so I am going to give my lens on some of the things that you guys talked about, because I feel like you guys have given in a way the little, uh, like a little bit more of a, I don't want to say non-scientific because it is science in a sense of you guys testing your, your own. Do you guys hear the dog barking in the background, by the way? No, no, no. You're clear. Okay. Thank God. All right. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, like in, in material science, there are a couple terms in engineering that people will use. So one of them is elasticity. Elasticity in, in physics terms is basically how much an object returns energy when it is deformed. So deformation just means if I were to stretch a steel pole one inch, you know, and it returned back. Like if you can imagine stretching a steel bar one inch, how much energy would it take to do that? And how much energy would you return? So that loop of energy stored and then more or less to deform it or how much energy it takes to deform it and then how much energy is returned is uh is called hysteresis so hysteresis is basically how much energy do you maintain so elasticity or stiffness and the hysteresis are really closely related and this is true of the human body and it's also true of, of shoes because shoes are just an extension basically of our body whenever they're on us so we're looking at the friction that's obviously going to be coefficient of friction which is something that we study in physics whenever you know we're looking at tons of different variables uh you know whenever we're, we're just like like free body diagram type stuff or moving objects dynamic systems so coefficient of friction is going to play a role and that plays a, is is two objects so it's not just the floor and it's not just the shoe it's both coming together to make up the coefficient of 
friction. It's not just one or the other. Um, so that also plays a really big role, right? Are you jumping on concrete? What shoes are better for concrete? Because the shoes that are better on concrete might not actually be better on hardwood. And so what you guys called court feel and stack, I would really call hysteresis and stiffness. And if you were to look or elasticity, and if you're trying to talk about grip, I would really call it like coefficient of friction. And some shoes are going to be better on some courts. Some shoes are not going to be better on some courts. Imagine it really depends if, on the material. Imagine if Go companies ahead. came out with the coefficient of friction for like different services. Wait, wait, what were you going to say? Like, imagine if a company just came out with the coefficient of friction for their shoes. Like, they're like, oh, on concrete. This is best on hardwood. This is best on concrete. Yeah. I mean, if you look at like, like in a way, even just a basketball, like the different materials that a basketball has in it, that's kind of one of the things they're modifying as well as the cushion, as well as everything else because of that. So if you look at an outdoor ball, right, it's like you don't get like outdoor balls have a very different texture to them. They have a different feel to them. People don't really do a good job of using, you know, an outdoor ball and getting it to adapt and feel like an indoor ball. I've never felt that before. And I think that that kind of plays into those variables I was kind of talking about is hysteresis. The return is just usually so much higher. It's usually just rubber <laughs> and air. And the thing bounces super freaking high, especially if it's hot, if it's hot, it even more so, right? Because the air molecules are bouncing around faster. Um, and so you, the ball bounces like crazy. So those are the things that I really look at. I don't remember what the other one, I mean, obviously weight plays a role and then, you know, the comfort kind of comes in. What you guys were saying is like the cushioning or, or whatever, like comfort of it is to me a measure of hysteresis, right? And so it's like, how much does the shoe and stiffness, it's a function of those, how much does the shoe deform and how much of that energy is it actually sucking out of the jump? Because that's actually a better thing. You're not going to feel it on your body quite as much potentially. Right. Yeah. And so when we're looking at jumping specifically, different athletes will respond to different shoes differently. And the reason why is because they have different stiffness in their tendons. So Austin and myself, right. Uh, we have actually all of us except for Shunker have longer ground contact times off of one foot, but Austin's one foot is actually very different than mine because he doesn't yield as much through his, his heel, his ankle, right? Like his foot kind of slaps the ground and Isaiah, your foot kind of slaps the ground and you guys have a very different takeoff than I have where my foot rolls through the takeoff every single time. And I have almost like a slower takeoff with a longer stride and everything else. Uh, in some ways, Austin's is pretty long, but whether you cuff or not, that plays a role. And then you have Shunker and Shunker's is probably on the stiffer end of jumping, right? Don't laugh. Uh, <laughs> so if, so if Shunker does a one foot jump and he has a very stiff leg, then he's going to deflect off the ground. Like a cue ball deflects off of concrete, right? Because he is, is creating this system. That's a very stiff extension spring, right? Or, or like, have you guys ever seen the analogy of high jumpers where they take the, uh, the crossbar cut in half and they bounce it off the ground and then it, it goes over top of the, the high jump bar. Oh, That's yeah. a super stiff system where you have a Isaiah. You were you you were both children. <laughs> I say and Austin are just cracking up every time I say stiff. Just just turn your stop muting yourself. <laughs> just just allow yourself. Let it let it be in the podcast. Why are you guys laughing? Least. What's so yeah. funny? What's so funny? Oh, it just it just killed me because you were like you were like Austin's very long and Shunker's very stiff. <laughs> it's, it's, it just destroyed me. We all have so, a we all have a type. We all have a type. Oh All right. Goodness. So, uh, <laughs> to, to my point is that every athlete is going to respond differently to a different shoe. Shunker, you really like the, you really like the leaning and you really yeah. like the way it weighed 10. I did not like that shoe in terms of peak jumping height. I felt like the 36 helped me way more. <coughs> and the reason why is because, and this is true of high jump. I hated jumping in high jump spikes because they were they literally felt like a rock. They were they were so much stiffer than oh, yeah. uh, a basketball shoe or the thirty six. I feel the the thirty six compress. The same thing's true of surfaces. You know, if you were to take this a step further, now we're looking at the human body. That's one system. We're looking at the shoe. That's another system. And we're looking at the floor. That's another system. So you have three different systems that you can modify the elasticity because there's that many collisions, right? That you're really dealing with. You're dealing with your foot into your shoe, the shoe into the ground. Um, you know, and, and there's more variables than just that. So I feel like all those things play, play a role in it. And that's why it's been really difficult for me to, 
give recommendations and why, like you guys said, like, you're like, I don't know. It really just feels like a comfort yeah. thing. You know what you I mean? And you guys probably noticed. The volume of work. I, I also think that's one of the benefits to like what Shunker is doing. Um, it's just giving out like, hey, like this is the cushion. This is the court feel. This is the grip. And then you can make a decision based on what you personally like ba based on that. Like not just like it's not somebody just being like, oh, this is the best shoe. Like, like everybody has to jump. Like he's just giving out his objective scoring based on different categories and you can yeah. decide yeah that's what exactly. that's what's been hard actually about the social media game of this whole thing is that my first and foremost goal is to get the information out and be the resource and uh that means that i'm making like one review a week maybe maybe two because that's just kind of how like the resources that i have to do right now but like i know if if i wanted to do like maximum growth i would do like 10 10 second videos every single day or something like that but i'd i'd that's not really what I want to do right now. Yeah. And that would be massively time consuming and it would be very expensive. You'd have to be buying 10 shoes a day. Yeah. <laughs> he already awesome. buys 10 shoes say? a day. No, he already buys 10 shoes a day. Don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> no, I was going to talk about the LeBron 10. I actually have that shoe. I still have it. It's like brand new. I have an all black pair. Um, and I always wanted to try them, but I was always afraid the, you know, the, the, soul would come off but jordan's been dun dunking in a 10 year old shoe for like years now so i don't understand like I, don't... I think he buys well i think he buys new ones right or no he's yeah, been, still, he's been still switching old. between lebron 10s and jordan 34s and jordan 34s are like one of my favorite shoes ever and i've never gotten to lebron 10s but the similarity is he likes really stiff shoes that like have that zoom underfoot that are able to snap back up and i part of the reason i think that which ties into what you were saying earlier john is that uh, Jordan, like Kilgannon's ability to convert speed and power into verticality is like one of one, like top zero, 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 one percent of like any. Do you think he's better than Isaiah at it? No. You're I'm being, legally, you're I'm legally kind. obligated. I'm yeah, legally obligated. <laughs> <laughs> Who jumps higher, Shunker? Oh, that's tested though. That's Isaiah. All right. Good, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> So my my lens on that, that has actually changed too because it's interesting when you look at Isaiah and Kilgannon and you start to compare their selection in shoes and, and some of the things that they prefer because Kilgannon is very particular about that specifically and Isaiah is not as much but he definitely has like a Ferrari that he prefers and a shoe that he's he's definitely privy to I guess you could say that he prefers and uh, I think that Isaiah well, one of the other questions was who has a quicker ground contact time? Because that would be kind of an indication of who's actually converting horizontal to vertical better. Isaiah actually had a shorter ground contact time at dunk camp whenever we were doing the bottle test and seeing who actually hit their head higher on a bottle. And ground contact time to me is correlated with peak force and peak force is typically correlated with if it's the same jump, whoever has a shorter ground contact time is going to have a higher peak force. And whoever has a higher peak force typically is better at converting horizontal into vertical momentum. And so it was, it was kind of interesting whenever I saw like, and, and I guess that's not necessarily even true because what we didn't measure is how much horizontal momentum Kilgannon actually has compared to Isaiah, right? Like, yeah. Isaiah, who do you think actually runs faster into their approach? I, I, I mean, I want to say Kilgannon, but after seeing the ground contact time thing, I don't know what's real anymore. <laughs> so it's possible. It's actually still possible. Kilgannon runs faster. That's um, kind of what I'm thinking. What I'm, what because, I'm trying to because say. Because if yeah. you were, if you're running faster <clears throat> and you were to plant further out in front of you, he could actually just horizontally break more and still get the same vertical displacement with a longer ground contact time. It's still possible. He might move into more flexion and have a slightly less like stiffness might change at certain points he allows himself to flex deeper so that, you're saying he's like running faster but then breaking for a longer period of time so that he can yeah his like breaking speed. might be longer so he and his peak force might not be quite as high uh on the like the vertical maybe the horizontal is higher it's hard to say i mean we haven't really seen the forces this is why it would be so cool to get you and kilgannon in the lab specifically you two uh, because you both have very similar jump techniques and you both are, you know, and em empirically improve your verticals an insane amount from when you were kids and you guys aren't necessarily genetic freaks. And it's, it's not a, a hit to anyone else, but you're probably two of the highest jumpers outside of 
I would say I, I want to, we're going to have Tony on the podcast on Thursday. So we'll be able to talk about this, but we're going to exclude Tony. And then Dak obviously is in that equation. And so when you're looking at like U three and uh, Jay Clark and his prime hit 48, but you and Kilgannon have a very similar takeoff style. Very, very similar. The only difference is really the horror, like mechanically is very, very similar. The horizontal momentum is definitely a lot different. So I would, I would think almost like I, I copied his approach when I was 16. It's almost like you copied him <laughs> cheater. <laughs> so I would think like just visually looking at it and I don't have numbers to back this up. I would think Kilgannon has a faster run up speed. I would think that, and we know that you have a shorter ground contact time than do you know where your ground contact time on your highest jump ever was? I do not, but I can look really quickly. I know Jordan was at like two six five, and I knew you were a two four five at dunk camp. So I would think that it has to do with something in the positioning that Kilgannon's in. We know Kilgannon has a wider stance than you, so I would say that maybe explains it more than anything else. Is like, and and maybe your his takeoff angle is not as steep as yours. Maybe that's the only other thing I can think of. Right, so it takes him more energy basically at that trajectory to to get to the vertical height that he does. Whereas like, I mean, it's still a function of, of vertical impulse though. So I don't know. It, it's really complex. I would need to see it on a force plate. And I, I honestly can't off the top, off the dome, uh, think about this. It's a lot of variables. What do you, what do you think of that Shunker? Uh, I mean, you pretty much said what I was trying trying to say, but better in the sense that it's like the <laughs> amount of speed that it's the amount of speed that you're able to go into I mean, should have killed Gannon on the podcast to finish that. I know. Out. I don't know if Jordan <laughs> even knows. He's just like, I just jump. <laughs> He's like, it doesn't matter. Just jump. That's what I could see him saying. I don't know if Jordan would ever come on a podcast. We never asked, but we could try. I feel like he charges for that. He wouldn't want to come on. He'd want to charge us. To he, he's on. done. He's done a lot of podcasts. Like he, he went, he was on the Jake Tora podcast. Oh, do you want to ask him if he wants to be on? Yeah, I'd be down. Yeah, ask ask me if he wants to come on next Tuesday. The only the only I'm thing taking I credit for that. I'm like taking a, credit like for a that. Conflict of interest would be like bounce kit. And yeah, like right. Team. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt we'll to see. ask. We'll say we'll say bounce kit versus THB. That's what we'll name the podcast. I got a, I got a <laughs> we'll question. Link, we'll link bounce kit. <laughs> yeah, we'll link yeah. bounce kit. <laughs> I got a, I got a question for everyone right now. Um, so head chunker. All right, so you're going to a dunk session for or you're going to a dunk contest for a million dollars. You need to you need to be at your very best what two to three shoes are going in your bag mm, isaiah did you hear that yeah yeah he, isaiah has to grab something to charge his laptop so it doesn't die uh, uh oh, i already i already did that oh yeah i did it okay uh, cool i would bring my leanings and my kobe sixes yeah fair answer leaning kobe <laughs> kobe six is that that's the pro trail is the kobe six yeah, yeah. pro trails okay and, All right. and i would buy a new pair of my kobe tens <laughs> you would, that doesn't have a pop zoom unit <laughs> yeah <laughs> why don't you just buy another one now kobe tens are actually kind of affordable compared to like the sixes and, and the eights yeah wait Honestly, what it's what? doable I, I might do that yeah i don't why if that's the shoe you would literally buy a new one of i don't know why you just wouldn't buy one now it's not like finances yeah, yeah, are probably that much wanna of a be, limiter, you want right? to be careful that the um the nostalgia hasn't overwritten the shoe too you know, yeah. you maybe, you prefer, it it with like, the, wow, maybe you prefer it. Maybe you prefer it. By the way, I got the ground contact time when I tested fifty point five, and it was uh, two seven five. So that's longer. You were yeah. two four five at camp, so it's possible Jordan just had a higher jump on that. Well, no, the flight times. Ooh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of variables a lot of here. that go into this. There, there are ways. That, that's exactly this so is a whole conversation for another. That's podcast. exactly why it's so hard to pinpoint like what's the best shoe because every single person jumps differently, even down to the best jumpers. Yeah, and, and that's why your, that's why we're like, wait, what do you feel confident in? What do you jump high in? What did you say, Isaiah? And also, session to session might be different oh, for yeah. the same jumper. <laughs> that is a hundred percent true. So I would pick the thirty six <clears throat> specifically with a clear translucent sole because I feel like it's a little softer and easier to compress especially when the shoe's new and it returns energy really well out of the box. I actually maybe one break in and it's like perfect for me outside of that, probably a second version of that shoe. So I don't pull my hamstring. <laughs> That's what I would go with. I've never liked a shoe more than the 36 in my entire life. So I don't know. And I don't hurt my hamstring and I don't hurt my Achilles. And I used to hurt my hamstring all the time in the NXT BB NXT. 
Oh yeah. But I jumped really high in it, but I used to hurt my hamstring all the time, which I think played into how big the heel was and and the heel toe deficit, which in the the or heel toe drop, which in the thirty six there's a much smaller heel toe drop, so I can load my Achilles more and get a better jump, which I really like. Uh, but it doesn't bother my Achilles that much, which is great too. Austin, what about you? What are you going with? Hmm. Trying to think. There's a few shoes that are very similar. I would say like. Are you speaking to the mic? Oh, I'm trying to think exactly. Um. All right, Kobe Six Pro Tro, definitely. Yeah. That's 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 one. You going with red or green? Red. It's so funny how we found that shoe too. Not how we found it, but how we got convinced. It was <laughs> Alex, wasn't it? It was Alex Ardizone, right? Yeah. But yeah, explain explain <laughs> how you guys both ended up with the same exact shoe. This happens every time. We normally end up like at the same shoe just by chance. But uh, uh, I think I, Isaiah, do you think it's chance, or do you think that he copies you? Okay, there's times where he copies me, like the GT. I think guy. all of you guys are easily influenced, and that's good for me as a reviewer because <laughs> eventually I'll get commission. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so right. just keep buying shoes. For I prefer my 36 end of end of story i love the 36 <laughs> but go ahead oh. i want to hear what uh oh I, that was my favorite shoe growing up and then i wore them all through high school like when i played basketball i kept buying pairs off ebay when they were 60 bucks used and i would just go through pairs and wear them and i i would always have like my best jumps in them and there was something in the back of my mind was like oh i'm still gonna get a pair of kobe sixes one day like i wish they weren't so old so they didn't explode and the pro tro came out and uh i tried on alex's they felt really good and yeah, and then Isaiah was like, screw it, I'm buying it. And I was like, well, I'm gonna buy it. And then the cheapest color was the red. So we both like happened to get the red ones at the same time. But okay. um, if I was gonna bring three shoes, definitely Kobe's, um, the high top Jordan 36s, but not the low top. I hate the low top. Um, I don't know why. It's whatever. And then I also agree. And it's because of the heel lockdown. I'll tell you that right now. That's something we didn't talk in, talk about. I guess that's a kind of comfort. But if the shoe slips, the heel is not locked in. I freaking a little bit's okay, but I generally do not like that. And the lows I've noticed are much slicker. Like yeah. the the highs are a little lighter. I think is that true, Shunker? Are the highs lighter? The highs. The oh, oh, I didn't have the lows, but actually, in a lot of cases, when they make a high and a low, the lows are actually just like a few grams heavier. But that category, sense. that category is something that I really want to review, but I can't because of how every single every single person's foot is different. So I just have to assume that everyone has the perfect fit when they get their shoe. Austin and I both like the highs. And you know who else likes the highs a lot too is Sutherland. Sutherland, Sutherland. likes the highs too. Man, I was so, okay. You know that that episode, that series of like, what do pro dunkers wear? And I just put the one on Isaiah uh, yesterday. Uh, people are asking for Sutherland next. And Sutherland, like getting getting what Sutherland wears has been such inconsistent infuriatingness because <laughs> i wait he likes, has he i have the answer to this do you because he wears he was 36s and 34s which makes sense but then he's also been wearing carry one lows which are completely different shoes he's been wearing um carry infinities which are completely different shoes he's been wearing puma mb2s and mb1s which uh, objectively you explain I this because i talked to him at dunk camp and i asked him about this and yeah, i say you might know as well please, so please i asked before him make this video and i said i said sutherland Right now, what shoes are you wearing? Do you have two pairs of like 36s? Or are you rocking 36s? Like, what do you wear? And he's like, yeah, I, I talked to a shoe guy and the shoe guy said that I should get two or three of the same exact shoe and then cycle them, cycle through them so that they last longer, which makes sense because if you compress a shoe more, and yeah. I've heard this, the lifetime of the shoe decreases because there's actually a time span for which a shoe will actually deform and reform. Yeah. And you can increase the life, the life span of your shoe if you cycle them frequently, yeah. which I've heard from my mentor, Mike. I've also now heard it from whoever Sutherland was talking to. I don't know, Shunker, if that is their validity to that. I mean, yes, because I sadly have 32 pairs of indoor shoes and they're all in pristine condition because I don't have enough time to put them all through the ringer. So you have noticed this as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so that he, he cycles between those two. The reason he wears the Pumas uh, is because he was given them for free and he likes mm -hmm. the way they look and they're not a bad shoe for him. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much what I've gathered. I know he got a free pair from Venice, the Venice event at okay. the NBA all-star weekend. And that's why he's been wearing those. The Kyrie's I actually don't know. I, I think he probably just, he might just like Kyrie. Maybe. I don't know if he likes, does he like Kyrie? Does anyone know? I could see him wearing a Kyrie to support Kyrie. I could see him doing that. We'll try to get him on the podcast. Well, see. so I he's actually had, a, had a, I actually had a little, little talk with him about, um, like at dunk camp saying, and he was saying like, oh, Kyrie's are actually really bad for dunking, but they're really, really good for hooping it, itself. But then yeah, I agree. he was at the most recent dunk camp uh, event, and then he was wearing the Kyrie lows to dunk in, which... Wait, was he? You know, are you sure about that? 
Yeah, I I I did the research. I did. I have videos. <laughs> Those are Kyrie one lows in a specific colorway. Kyrie low one. I could see him wearing that just for look. Honestly, and it was like the the hot peach colorway. The hot yeah, my last, colorway. my last shoe would be GT cut if anyone cares. Oh Ooh, yeah, I GT care. cut. I That's yeah, a good one. Because I don't get really high in it. I don't like how it feels, but for some reason I have amazing. These are my two shoes: ones. GT cuts and way uh, way weight tens. Wait, wait, you, oh, was it two or three? I, I, I don't know. Like uh, two or three, either or. But you, you said you gave a uh, GT cut and Kobe sixes. Oh, you're right. What? He was wearing those those bright pink ones. Yeah, those were Kyrie's. Those are Kyrie's. Just I did not know what those were either. I was trying to figure it out. Honestly, it could have just been a logistic thing. I have no idea. Yeah. I could. We could just ask him. We could text yeah. him and ask. Him. So All the right, funny so, thing. Go ahead. The funny thing about um those Kyrie's and then just generally like Nike shoes is that they've literally not changed in how the shoes have com- been composed in terms of like the midsole and the cushioning and the bounce system since the Jordan 12 and the Jordan 13, which came out in 96 and 97. So for 25 to 26 years, Nike has been riding the high of Zoom and just <laughs> just riding it. And they had barely made any changes, barely made any like innovations. They've just been making the shoes lighter a little bit and then like changing the shapes of where they go. Do you, do you ever hear this uh, the, the old adage? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's not try to reinvent the wheel. Hey, well, look, <laughs> they're they're crushing whatever they're doing. People I'm, like, yeah, I'm I'm telling them they got they got to change something because uh, for me personally, as a consumer, popping. it's getting old. Yeah, and it keeps popping. Yeah, keeps popping. We we've talked about this, haven't we? Like, yeah, we have. Like, I was literally like, I'm kind of tired of Nikes. Like, I ripped through like four pairs of Nikes a year. My the only reason he's ripped like everything yeah. ripped. the only reason i've been reviewing nikes is because um well the return policy is actually, yeah well because the return policy has been really uh been really convenient when i don't have to resell something it's great that's a terrible terrible thing to say we all know that means that it, you look at the little date on the inside and if it's within <laughs> two years you send it right back to nike and you're like, I do that broken, for like it's a defect. no you just wanted a new shoe you didn't like that one I have to do it for like four pairs of shoes, actually. Like my LeBron right. 20s are ripped, a bunch of other ones. The Kobe okay. 6 is ripped. We both ripped in the same spot because we're like mm-hmm. the same. We The way we plant is like the same for two foot. So if yours is much right. more athletic. Don't take today. advantage of the system like Shunker people. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know that. Shunker <laughs> is growing a business. He has hey, to, look, right? Nike has been taking has been taking advantage of the system for their entire time. So. Yeah, that's true. I'm just not trying to. They, they have child laborers in China. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's terrible. We don't. I'm glad we don't. We can proudly say we don't have any virtual assistants. We pay all of our employees a fair wage. Wait, what did you just say, Austin? You're muted. <laughs> did you just basically said THP doesn't use child labor? Is that what you're? We saying? don't use VAs. It's different. ethically sourced. It's ethically different. Sourced. A lot of these, a lot of these, they, hire vertical ups, gains. They, they just hire these VAs from like other countries and pay them like seven dollars an hour virtual assistants to do all their work. I've been working for THP since I'm 12 years old, <laughs> <laughs> and you've been compensated fairly the whole time. <laughs> We're a small business. <laughs> oh goodness all right well i feel like this is a good point to end in the podcast so thanks yeah. for listening guys um if you're interested in reviews specifically for jumping higher go to shunker Iyer's instagram page shunker what is your handle uh my review handle is at above the rim reviews all one word no spaces no underscores just at above the rim reviews on tiktok it's at Iyer go higher i-y-e-r go higher as in jump higher all one Sweet. word. Yeah. And I will do my damnedest to remember to put that in. Isaiah, Austin, <laughs> do you guys have anything that you want to share? Unmute me. Am I unmuted? Am I muted? You're unmuted. Oh, okay. After I'm out of probation for training, 48 inch vertical at Dunk Camp. Just watch. Oh, yeah. My, oh, I will be at Dunk watch. Camp. My goal is 40. So I'll see you guys watch. there. We got a 40, a 48. Isaiah, what are you, you going to do? My goal is to not healthy. die. You're going to not die. You're going to be healthy. <laughs> have, an, have a working IT band. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, it was fun. It was super fun, guys. Make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and we will catch you on the next episode of the THB Strength Podcast. Peace out.